Hey friends, what's up? Kate here from Rise and Shine Wood Signs. Today I want to talk to you about the touch probe and the different ways that this can be used when you are trying to get your machine zeroed onto your piece of wood and what is the best way. There are three ways to use this. I will briefly touch on each way. If you have any more questions, you can feel free to leave those in the comments. But for now, let's go ahead and get started on the three different ways to use this touch probe. The first way is going to be face up with the emblem on the top and the inverted side face down. This is actually gonna be how we're going to probe for X, Y, and Z. You can put the banana clip into either port. It's really, I believe, a preference on what's just easier for you to use. And then what we're gonna do is lower the drill bit or the bit into this side, this circle that's imprinted on the side of this. Now keep in mind this is from Onefinity, directly bought from them. I bought that when I bought my Journeyman X50. I did uh, not use any other touch probes. I have not used any other touch probes, so this video is strictly for the Onefinity. But we're going to go ahead and place this on the corner. Like I said, the inverted side is going to be face down. We're going to attach the nut to the collet. And then I'm going to grab my controller. And we're going to bring this, turn the controller on. I am using an Amana bit. It's a 60 degree V bit um, with three different flutes. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the center. All right, so now you can see that that is in the center, ready to go. On my touch screen, I'm going to be Coming over to the probe X, Y, and Z down here on the bottom. We're going to hit probe X, Y, and Z. You're going to get a message to touch the probe magnet or the probe block to the bit. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do right now. We're just going to grab the magnet and touch it to the tip of the bit. Then we're going to go ahead and hit continue and prompted. This is for... Um, if you do get this message here on your screen, this is asking for the diameter of the bit. Now, as a newbie and a very beginner CNC, I had, I knew what this meant, but I didn't know what this meant. And what this is asking you is the diameter of the tip of the bit. This is not asking you for the diameter of this tip of the bit. This here at the top, whether this is an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, this bit in particular is a quarter of an inch. And so is this one. So when it reads diameter, we are just going to leave that at 0 0.25. Now, if that were an eighth of an inch bit, I would use the 1.2, 0 0.125 when doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and sit set. And as you can see, the bit is going to tap down twice on the center. And then it's going to go over to the side. I do have my piece of wood uh, secured down with double-sided tape on the back because this design is a geometric design and it's gonna be going up and down and across. So I don't want any clamps in the way of that. Okay, so that's done. And then what you're gonna get when you're probing X, Y, and Z is you're gonna get this message, it's probing complete. Please move the probe out of the way. So I'm gonna grab the magnet and the touch probe. We're gonna move that out of the way. And then once I hit okay, you're gonna see the machine jog back to this center point. So I'm gonna hit done. So when it says to make sure everything is out of the way, that's exactly what you want. You wanna make sure your hands, your fingers, everything is out of the way, okay? So that is number one. That is probing X, Y, and Z. Now let's go over to the second method, which is probing only Z. Now, as a quick side note, I wanna give you guys a quick tip. When you have to change bits, let's say this comes all the way back here and it's here and you have a bigger bit you wanna put in and you're afraid you're gonna mess up your project. Let me give you a quick tip. So when you are using this machine, you can make sure your X, Y, and Z are all the way on. 
You can raise this. You can move this around. You can put it wherever you want it. You need to get it to change your bit, okay? So quick tip. This is a fun little fact. In watching my videos, you may learn more than one thing. This bullseye right here in the onefinity, you can hit this bullseye, move to XY origin, confirm. This is gonna move the onefinity back to its position. Now, the X and Y are where they need to be. They're at zero position. Your X, your up and down, is not zeroed. That is something you are gonna have to re-zero when you change your bit. As long as you don't re-zero your X and Y, they should be fine and you can use that bullseye to move your bit exactly where it was. I struggled with this for a long time. Now that I've gotten it down, I feel a lot more comfortable. Now, for method number two, we are gonna use the Z only. This is when, let's say you have your surfacing bit and you only wanna probe it um, because a surfacing bit is an inch diameter and it's a little bit hard to get the center of that directly in here. Plus, it may not move over enough in order for you to get the X and the Y. So the X and the Y would be the center of the bit if you're using a surfacing bit. The center of it, not the wing of it, not the edge of it, the center of the shank of the bit. So back to probing for just Z. We know it's on X and Y. Let's say we just changed the bit and we want to probe for Z. We're just going to put this on here. I'm going to grab my remote. I'm going to lower this down. Okay, it says about an eighth of an inch is what you want to be. That may be a little bit more, a little bit less. Then we're going to come back over to the Onefinity screen. We're going to hit Probe Z. We're going to touch the bit to the block. And then we're just going to let that drop down. And it'll do a tap twice. Now it's going to say that the probing is done. So we're going to hit OK. Now, something I do want you to know. If you are probing only Z, let's say I had moved this all around. These two numbers right here for the X and the Y would be completely different. And you would want to hit the home location and the home location for the Z. Okay? I know this says over. I know that's going to throw out an error sometimes. Um, sometimes I work with it, sometimes I don't. And it's probably because I have a file loaded in here that is not accurate for what I'm wanting to do. But if I were to load the actual file and then Z this piece of wood like I wanted to, everything would be okay. So why don't I show you that really quickly just in case you were getting those errors. So let's go ahead and load this message or load what I want to load. So we're going to go to Lexar. And I'm going to go to CNC files. I do have a file folder on my Lexar drive. This is an address board, profile one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open that. And as you can see, that overage went away. If you wanna know more about the over and under things, those will be in separate videos I will do later on. I don't currently have any, but it's something I will be addressing because I know a lot of people struggle with that. So for the third and final method, I will show you exactly what it looks like to use the third method which is the paper method so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of the touch probe let me grab a piece of paper all right so the third and final method i just use a sticky note any old piece of paper will work and okay so I'll tell you what, let me give you guys a, just a quick one, two to make sure that everything is square. All right, so we're gonna show you, I'm just gonna home the machine really quickly. I just hit my home button here, just so you guys can get an exact representation of what this looks like when I'm trying to zero it.
Okay, so now all of my axes are at zero. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like to move all three. Okay, whoops, too far. All right, now I am using a V bit. We're gonna bring this all the way down to the piece of paper. All right. Let me just get this over the corner really quickly. Okay, so that looks like it's right on the money on the corner, okay? I can barely show up. That's probably the exact position, to be honest. But I want to show you guys just exactly what I mean. So when you're doing this, you want to be able to have... This has a lot of room. So I'm going to use the A on my remote, which is super slow. And I'm going to move it down just a little bit. Okay, so you can see... You can hear a little bit of the resistance. And that's about where I want it to be. Now keep in mind... If I were to turn my router on right now, it would just bore a small little hole um, into the tip of the wood, which is what I don't want. So when I tell it to probe and I actually get ready to hit play, it's going to lift the router up because of the soft uh, Z. So for right now, you can see all of my programs are under. Everything is under. So I'm going to home my X because that's where I want it to be. I'm going to home my Y, and I'm going to home my Z. And you can see that all three of those now went okay. This is actually going to take a minute 47 to cut. And I want to show you what exactly this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn my router on. You will see it jump up. And then you will also hear my dust back turn on, and then I will run this so you guys can see exactly what I'm working with. All right, so this needs to be at 22,000 for this V-bit, which is a setting number four on my dial. I'm gonna leave my dust boot off for this example just so you guys can see what I mean when the router moves up. And that's what I want you guys to really notice um, when that does that. Actually, I'm not gonna turn my dust boot on because that would be silly if I'm not using it. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my router on. There's the soft V that I was talking about. And I'm going to go ahead and hit continue.
Okay, so as you can see, the project did not work out like I wanted it to. I must have, I measured this really late last night and I must have measured incorrectly. I actually thought this board was six inches wide and it was actually only five and a half. So five and a half versus six, a half inch off, that's gonna be a problem. So yeah, that's a solid five and a half and that's why the board looks like it did. Now, some of you may be wondering why I ran it off the edges and then came out. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted um, the cutoff to come all the way straight through. I didn't want to have a stopping point, but I'm gonna go ahead and just probably fix this up or do something different with uh, on the back side of it and then grab a six inch piece of wood to make this right because this is actually gonna have um, numbers on it and stained and polyurethane. It's gonna be an address sign for our home. But point is, I hope that you learned something really fascinating about the X, Y, and Z for the Onefinity Touch Probe. Remember, this is for your X, Y, and Z with the backside inverted flush against the corner. The banana clip is there for your uh, discretion, your personal use. However, whatever's easy or convenient for you, this is to um, do your Z. This is only your Z. And then, of course, the paper method. If you guys have any questions or comments, please, please leave them below. And if you have found this video helpful and you like it, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content from your friendly female CNCer. See you guys in the next one.